Oh no! <clears throat> oh hello hello! I am here. Wait, there's there's something. I got something going wrong here. Something is very wrong. Let me move camera over. Ooh. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Oh dear. We are not off to an auspicious start today. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Only two chat rules. <laughs> Please be over the age of 17 and... Please be kind to one another, to one another. <laughs> Yay! Hello, Mona! And hello, everybody. Um, as you can see, I am off to a late and, as ever, discombobulated uh, bit of uh, <laughs> a start popping out chat. Moving it over here so I can see it. And, and then we're going to restore that down to that size. If I don't talk myself through this, Lord only knows that I'll lose the picture and everything else. Okay, there are the camera controls. Get rid of the blue lights. Go away, blue lights. I don't like you. I want nice, warm, yellow light. There we go. Most people will go the other way. Yellow light is actually false light. Blue light is daylight. <coughs> but it hurts my eyes. Um, hello, Barb. And hello, Linda and... Let me have a, a sip of, of coffee here. I really did get off to a late start today. Nothing unusual there. Um, for me, at any rate, y'all know that. Been around for a while. So how is everybody? I'm sorry I missed y'all. <coughs> I'm going to calm down, Christine. Sorry, I missed you all last week. Um, how is everybody? Uh, by the way, it was only cold that one day, um, and then it got warmer again. And when I say cold, I mean it was 28 degrees outside, so it was um, it was in the low low 50s in the house. Uh, so it was it was you know it was certainly cooler than either coriander or I were comfortable with. Um, that is not to say that I am without heat. I do have uh, sources of heat to heat individual areas, but I needed to have that heat on in other areas to make sure that pipes didn't freeze and stuff like that, which is why I didn't move it all into the office so that I could actually be here. But Anyway, that being neither here nor there, how is everyone? <clears throat> okay. All right, so now I brought out a couple of choices today. This, of course, is my very first book. Uh, I published this back in, uh, so I drew it in 2015, I think. Yes, I drew all the images in 2015. And then I released it uh, in early 2016. And uh, it's, it remains uh, the, one of the best-selling books that I've had. <coughs> but <coughs> I haven't sold as many, but I sell them steadily. So um, doing great for 70. Wow. Linda, happy birthday. And congratulations on making it 270. I hope I get there. I am just going to be 62 on my next. So it's like 
And I know how hard it was to get there. <laughs> Good morning, Daryl Lynn. Good morning, Robin. Um, good morning, everybody, wherever you happen to be. Uh, so these are just some of the images uh, that I've colored from this book. I love to um, show this particular one. A lot of you have seen this one before. But this is one of the most, um, to me, this was a real learning experience. And when I talk about coloring books and um, them being uh, the story that you tell about your book, right? So the way that this one came about is, uh, and I'm trying to remember what this is. Uh, I know that it's water-based marker. And then I think that this was when um, I had used, oh, the, the water-soluble crayons. Um, Neo2s, that's it. Um, and I did a background, and the background was horrible. It was horrible. And it was, uh, I don't remember who it was now. Um, uh, Margot, uh, Zargot Hunter, that's who it was. It was Zargot Hunter, uh, who suggested that I would be able to correct it if I use like a watercolor over it and, uh, made, you know, use like a green wash. And so I did. And that ended up suggesting the colors for the rest of the piece, right? And so I think this is one of the prettiest things I've ever colored. And it started out as a, oh, heck, I'm going to have to throw the book away. You know, and that is, um, hey, Jill, well, I'm glad that you're here from rehab. Are you working hard? Hi, Kenny. Um, and so at any rate, so that is what I mean by the story of your book. And um, this particular one, like for instance, I think this is an, a, is an epic fail, but other people like it. And I only think it's an epic fail because it is not what I thought it should be. And yet other people like it a lot. And so I, you know, it's got, it's got uh, uh, the, the, um, that glitter paint stuff from, um, uh, you know, it comes in the, it's like the little acrylic paint, only it's acrylic, it's uh, got glitter in it. So, it's got that, it's got, I mean, I tried to do all sorts of things to save it, which I thought I was saving it, but it, it, you know, it ended up being, I guess, even I have to say, it's not that horrible. So as you're working on your books and you're learning about coloring and doing all of that, now I should say that this is all mostly done with uh, water-based markers, not even alcohol markers, just water-based markers. Um, this one is actually turned out to be one of my favorites. For, it's Color Chaos, right? It's actually Color Chaos, but all it is is little berry. It's all, I mean, everything is black colored, all one color. Um, there's no shading or anything like that, but it, you just, I just got creative with dots and stripes and, you know, outlining stuff with uh, white Posca or not white Posca, but white gel pen, uh, you know, putting in uh, uh, glitter dots or, uh, you know, um, yeah, what do you call those? Uh, boy, I am having a day, aren't I? Um, paint pen dots, thank you. <laughs> And then this one was one of my favorites. This one actually 
was the first thing I ever colored with Derwent ink tins. Um, and I just, I ended up, I, I just, I love this one. Absolutely love this one. So as you're doing a book and you're telling your story, um, you know, you, you have all of the memories of that. Now, of course, the reason why I'm showing you this particular one is because I drew it. And um, now this is a work in progress. So I don't know what I'm doing here. I was obviously playing with something, some sort of color medium. Flowers, of course, are fundamental. Plus, I just want to show you off my designs because I'm not actually going to be coloring in this today. This was the very first drawing that I ever did um, that I released to the public. And so this one is the one that started me off. I gave this away in um, Adult Coloring Worldwide on eBay or on Facebook and in uh, Coloring Books for Adults. And the rest, as they say, is history. 13, 14 books in, uh, we're still going strong. So. And let's see, oh, there's something that I'm working on. I A lot of times I'll use this too for, um, you know, trying new little techniques of things. Like obviously I'm, I'm blending here. So this is, I don't know if you can see that, but this is, this is colored. This is, um, and then this is blended. So I don't know what I, it's, this is all the same thing. Only this is it blended out, maybe. Maybe with the lighter of white or something. I don't know. Problem is, is that half the time, if I don't like it, I forget to go back and, and uh, figure out what it is that I did. Now, this I am still coloring on. Um, this is a Prismacolor project. Um and I think it's coming along quite nicely, but I haven't worked on it. I think I was working on this when Anne got me involved in YouTube. And I have not worked on it since, so I should probably do that. This was, I was playing with eraser effects here, this ring around the, um, the ring around the outside of this flower, the highlight, um, and the, the one right here, these were all eraser effects. Um, just to see what I could achieve with uh, using my eraser as if it were a paintbrush. And Ann colored that on live once back then. Um, I think that video has been wiped out. Anything else that's good in here? I got lots of terrible stuff, but not... Okay. And then, all of you who've seen this a thousand times before, <laughs> look away and give me five minutes, please. Go get some coffee. Because I want to show off to the new people that might not have seen these. This is my book, uh, my most recent book, Dragons, Flowers, and Mandalas, Oh My. Um, at least I think it's the most recent one, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I'm about due for to put one out, that's for sure. Um, okay, so this is, this is one of the pages in here, and we, this one is still a work in progress, uh, but this page was pretty popular. Yeah, Barb, I wish I had remembered to do that. And this is um, this is marker based with pencil on top. Could be any pencil though. 
I don't, uh, it's likely my delis. And this is Spica. This was my very first dragon. She came with a little story. And I was uh, experimenting with sparkles and uh, just, you know, using lines to make grass in the background and doing all of that. So you're just, I mean, you know, when you're, and this of course is the one in the book. And this one is, uh, I think just water-based marker and uh, paint. Uh, uh, no, this one's alcohol marker and um, paint sticks. Uh, the Zier glitter pens. Thank you. And uh, they're acrylic glitter pens. <coughs> and this one is just one of the mandalas that's in the book. <laughs> Sorry about that. This one isn't in this book. This is in, um, this will be in the next one. re-releasing my first book uh well i could re-release it but it's there it's available you can um you can buy it now <laughs> it's it's available in both pdf and in uh it's available on amazon still i guess that i could I could re-release it, but it is, I mean, it's still for sale. I did re-release it after a year with a new cover. Um, Daryl Lynn, if you, uh, hang on, let me see if I can get a link for you. Uh, now that I know that I can do this without uh, completely messing everything up. Um, let's see here. January 6th, show notes and links. All right, let me see if I can bring that up. Uh, and let me see, edits, find, uh, flowers and dreams. Oh, look at that. Flowers and Dreams, second edition. Uh -huh. That's this one. Copy. Oh, I like the way that worked. That was pretty trick. I'm not usually that efficient with things like that. <laughs> That's it right there. That is my Amazon affiliate link, by the way. I do earn a small stipend from Amazon for uh, people who use that link and then make purchases uh, on Amazon. I will likely or not only earn it on uh, that item if you were to purchase it, but also anything you uh, might shop for during that shopping session. Uh, and, of course, it costs nothing to you. So there's no additional cost to you for that. Um, all right, so now this is, I have to say that by the rules. <laughs> the rules of Amazon require me to say that, um, which is why I've had to put it in writing and stuff like that on my, uh, on my description, which <coughs> is notoriously missing from this video because I went brain dead and couldn't remember how to do it. Um... And I was in a hurry, so I just uh, clicked through it. Uh, this is uh, also a work in progress, very much. 
uh, and it is one of the, uh, it's called um, Age and Wisdom. And uh, of course, all of these creatures both enjoy long lives uh, and are considered wise in nature, uh, which is why I call this one Age and Wisdom. And it also is in this book. And this is what the Etelva ones that I work uh, that I use for the show for demonstrating, um, you know, different techniques and things like that, uh, because they're all unfinished. Uh, this one is I don't I guess I think I had Christmas in mind on this for some reason, but these all look like uh, sort of Christmas angel Christmas ornaments to me. Um, but there's you know obviously the bottom portion of these is undone. Um, and I think that what happened is, is that as we were working on it, I got to these and they didn't seem to work uh, along with everything else. So another, uh, you know, one of those sort of interesting things about the story of how pictures and books come into being um are you know is that i'm going to be changing pretty much the entire design uh coloring wise based upon the sort of accident that i made here because i like these so well so these will also be uh tiger type flowers uh jill i think you were here when we made when i made this mistake and um, I seem to remember that you were here. And it was almost like, well, these just didn't go with the rest of the design. Well, no, it was that the rest of the design didn't go with the really cool flowers. <laughs> so I'm going to fix that. My favorite, my absolute favorite. Now this actually, this picture, I need to send this to Mo. I promised that I was going to send it to Mo, um, uh, to Nana Mo, and I still have to do it. Um, but it is one of my favorite things also that I've ever colored. Um, and it also is in the book. Now, this is a combination of, uh, there's acrylic paint, that is actual paint, you know, that came in a bottle. Um and then all of the, you know, the flowers. I did this with ink tents, I believe. Or, yeah, I think this was ink tents with pencil over it. Anyway, and lots of lots of glitter embellishments. And another one of my little favorites. Also, a work in progress. Uh, because I'm working on, um, I want to pop all of the, um, concrete work, uh, by deepening up all the shadows and doing all the contrasts, but I need the, I need to break out the pencils in about, I don't know, six or seven hours <laughs> to do it proper justice. So I haven't yet done it. Uh, and this is the one where. I actually just, uh, I put in a little background with watercolors and, um, you know, I, I, because none of this stuff is actually here in the original drawing. Uh, well, I, I guess that there is, I did put in this line, but that's it. But the trees and the little dragon in the background, that was my homage to um, uh, Game of Thrones, you know, the three dragons. Anyway, uh, okay, there's another one. Also, I love this. This was just very simple marker coloring, uh, not marker coloring. Yeah, marker coloring, alcohol marker coloring. And, um, And then just, you know, like, oh, this was 
I know what this was. We were uh, playing with the glitter watercolors. That was it. And um, with the golds. And so that's what, there's just tons of gold on there. A little cave dweller here. I love this. I need to color this one day. Uh, this I've seen this done a variety of ways. Now, when I when I draw these, I see them in black and white. I don't see them in color until I go to color them myself. With, um, oh, look at that. I have a I have a lunch stain. So those of you who noticed that, I am so sorry. I did do that just today. I really do take a shower every day. I clean and I do wear clean clothes. I do put my jacket on uh, over my shirts uh, every day and I don't wash it every day. Uh, but it's nice and warm in the house today. So, um, and, But I saw this one um, colored. It was done in browns and blacks. And it was so pretty. So, this one, I love this drawing. This one actually was something else. Um, this has all been resized for this particular area. But this was part of another drawing. I, um, you know, back in the day, well, actually, it's still the day, but um, the number one coloring books on in the world are the ones that are uh, less than tasteful, I'll say. And uh, I try to draw in that genre. <laughs> and uh, the ones, you know, with curse words and, and you know, funny sayings and uh, I think Heather Peacock Land has, or yeah, has uh, a, a whole series of them out there. Uh, uh, the tiny, uh, the big adventures of Tiny So and So. Anyway, uh, I tried to draw in that genre, and this was a drawing from that time, and it had a say down here on the bottom. Uh, and it had to do with the turtles looking up and he is thinking that that's a duck about to land on his head. And so it had to do with his thoughts. Uh, <laughs> you really didn't want to know that, did you? Okay. Uh, and anyway, uh, this is my What You Doing Dragon. I love my, I love the eyes on What You Doing Dragon. I got those really right. Uh, And I love the sky. This was done with uh, uh, the Derwent, uh, not the ink tints, but the Grappetins. So that I was able to make this stormy sky back here. All right. I promised you Kanoko Iguza. This one also is a very much a work in project, Derwent ink tints. Uh, Hi, Martin Gamino, and thank you very much for coming, and it's nice to see you, too. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is just uh, this. Now, I uh, will turn back here. So this is all of the books so far. Um, so as you can see, there's, what, four times eight, nine, ten... So there's 10 plus this, 11. Yeah, and then there's my travel size. Uh, and then I'm in both treasuries. I think that's where I, I get to... I think that's where I get to 14, anyway. So, yes, and all of my books are available on Amazon. They are also available in my Etsy shop. Uh, which, of course, links are in the descriptions of 90% of my videos. I think that there are links uh, in this video for the Etsy shop as well. 
uh, as ever, uh, artists are grateful for such things as, uh, you know, uh, if you want to support artists, buy their work. <clears throat> if you're one of those that likes to support the arts and want to donate to artists, most all of us uh, do have PayPal accounts, and you'll find links for those and stuff like that available as well. All right. So now let's talk about Kanoko Igusa. These two books have been around for a long time. Uh, she's since released more books. These are the two that I have, uh, but they are intimidating. And so we want to talk about that. And we want to talk about how to sort of work around that uh, if you want to color in these books, right? Because there are lots of stuff going on and you can do a really amazing job with them uh, or you can just straight color them. Either way, it's actually going to work really, really well. Uh, now, I don't believe that I have colored yet I got this from Nanamo. Uh, thank you, Nanamo, for having sent this to me. I'm just, I'm flipping through it really quickly to find out if I've colored anything in this yet or not. I am not. I'm going to do uh, one of the uh, things I want to work on this year is um, working on Lavelia's Color My Horde. Uh, Hi, Connie, and uh, Lobelia's uh, channel. Um, she has a, a hashtag about coloring her horror, coloring the coloring books <coughs> that you own but you haven't colored in yet. Now, this is Rhapsody. Um, uh, Rhapsody in the Forest, I think. And this one is, I believe, the only thing that I've colored yet in this. And uh, it is very much a work in progress. Now, this is done entirely with, so far, with Koenor, uh, the Tritone pencils. And if you are unfamiliar with the Koenor pencils, they have three colors in each pencil. And because of the, the pieces in the... Uh, chips are so tiny they allow you even in a small space to color a variegated uh coloring like a brick wall um these really are gorgeous books aren't they connie i mean you know in her own way uh, yeah we we because you and i have a tendency i think to like a lot of the same artists uh jane of course I love the Kanoko Igusa books, and I also love the Romantic Country books. Now, all three are completely different styles of line art, yet all three are depicting the same types of things. So, uh, like, for instance, you know, you've got a scene like this, and then you've got a scene like this all right now that's completely different line art but i mean equally as and i just pulled this page sort of at random um but equally as challenging and both you know both sort of wait where's where's the one that i did this one this is the this one is sort of the star of my my little show. This was a uh, a page that I did that was because the the in the original book <laughs> or in the book the only thing that's on this page I say the only thing are the little girl in the chair. And of course, the table with all of the drapery, uh, the duck and the other chair, and this garland, and the all of the—I mean, the 
The stuff that's actually sitting on the table is all there. Everything else I put in. So I drew in this, you know, I drew in the whole painting and the clock and the, you know, I, I just basically I took it from an outdoor scene to an indoor scene. I added windows and a floor and uh, I wish I had a good picture of it when um, it, to me, it is the most, it's the most creative coloring project that I've ever worked on. And it was one of the very first, you know, I made it and I thought, well, why would they be in, you know, why would they have brought their indoor picnic in or their outdoor picnic inside? Well, of course, because it's raining outside. <laughs> So as I worked on this, I was having the best time because I was telling myself a story, right? And so, you know, I, I used an, an old uh, uh, watercolor marker or yeah, water-based marker. Uh, and it was, it wouldn't lay down. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> apologize it wouldn't well uh, i apologize it wouldn't uh, lay down a uh, smooth color so i thought well what am i going to tell anybody about that you know sort of streakiness well i don't know but it looks kind of like uh, you know the old silk wallpaper or walls when you used to cover them with fabric. Well, that's what that is. <laughs> and it's got just tons and tons of um, holographic, uh, like a, a transparent, translucent holographic uh, paint representing all the glass. So that, you know, uh, the, the table glass. So the, I just wanted to see if, what would happen if I did that. And so you just, you know, you, you really do. But I love the fact that, I mean, these windows sort of took on a life of their own. I, you know, I really, I'm like, huh. And, you know, as I, I'm going, well, you know, a crossbar piece would be nice there. And because I drew it all in in pencil before I, before I, you know, inked it in or anything like that. Uh, and I just... The more I went with it, and the more I, the more I added little details. The clock would look nice there. Well, you know, how do you do a a, a clock? So I went and got a, a, some photographs of clock faces, and you know, they did the the moon and the. Anyway, it's just hilarious. So you can, you really can, <clears throat> just tell yourself a story. But I digress. Look, now I've been talking about coloring for. Uh, you know, for what, nigh on 45 minutes or 40 minutes, and we haven't colored the darn thing. So let me see if I can find my colors, uh, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, oh. See, my all of my, my Black Widows really are all uncovered. I really am going to... I'm going to swatch this out. Uh, oh. Oh. What's that? Oh. Okay. You know, we've got, to, we've got to color in this sometime. This is this uh, Soul of One Black River Art. Huh. This was a gift. I am unfamiliar with either Black River Art or I don't know who they are or really any, you know, how to color any of these, but I'll bet they'd be pretty. Huh. Okay. Uh, I digress. Hang on. Oh, these are the Grapitans, by the way. These go with my precious um, uh, Dormant Ink Tents. And they, these are just simply water based graphite. Oh, whereas the others are uh, 
are uh, ink, liquid, you know, ink. Uh, oh. Where are they? Oh, use them. Knew I had them. Okay. Try to. Now, <clears throat> these are. Uh, these are a, an interesting pencil to work with. Um, for one thing, they are very. Uh, thin, actually, and uh, they are made in the Czech Republic. And as you can see, or maybe you can't see, um, let's see if I can get it to auto focus here. Yeah, turn the auto focus back on. There it is. Okay, so as you can see, those little chips of uh, color. <clears throat> and each one of these pencils, and they'll be, I'll put a link for uh, these pencils in after the fact, uh, has those. And then these are representative of the colors that are inside. So like for instance, the brick, is probably this tiger or ember. Um, is that the tiger? And that's the earth tones. Where's the one that's the tiger? Flare, forest. That's the volcano. I love that. Um, there it is. There's the tiger. I just think that's so cool. Um, so, like, these two together are great. Let's see if I can do a little brick wall here. Now, I have yet to uh, discover the best sharpener for these. Unlike the other pencils, okay, that'll do. Now let's zoom down uh, back to camera control and zoom, zoom, okay, and And see if I can't get a little focus. There we go. All right. So this one is, uh, so it, you start out right, right? <laughs> and it's one color. And if in this space, you want it to be another color. You just slightly turn your finger. Around so that you're bringing in another of the colors. Guys, I apologize. I am. Um, I just can't seem to get my breathing quite right. I will relax now that I'm actually coloring and I'm not having to think. Now, I have found that when you're doing these, the best way is to do each one separately of these bricks as opposed to try and do a bunch of them at the same time uh, because that's, of course, how bricks are. 
Now these are uh, seem to be bound and determined to want to be um, all pretty much the same. So you can change to a different location. Like for instance, if you've got a bunch that are looking like they're just all the same, you can change it out. You can use a different color. Like this is Spanish Knight. You could use part of that and then maybe part of that. The idea, of course, being that when you're using these tritones, you're getting a lot of variegation. Now, um, I have used them, and I guess the reason why I want to talk about this is because it has to do with the tools for the job. So there's always going to be uh, specialized tools uh, for any kind of job. You don't have to have the tools. We could just as easily do this without the trickery, all right? All that you would have to do is have a little bit of experience to be able to do it because you see what it, the deal is, right? You see how they work when you use them. They work because uh, there are little teeny tiny chips of different colors in there and that's how they work they you know each one sort of touches and exactly Mona exactly roofs tree trunks wood uh, I saw Nisi using them on um, uh, is she she's the the dollar diva is that right uh, I saw she uses them on her woodwork and things like that but she can also do woodwork without them and but that's the key these will show you uh you know they'll, they'll teach you how to do it how to do realistic wood the way you do realistic wood is with little bits of different colors that sort of all go together and so that sort of teaches you how to do that. So then, if you don't have Kohenors, you know that you could pull out your brown and your, uh, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a cherry red, a brown, a black, a beige, a gold, you know, a mustard, anything like that. And you could use that combination of pencils to create uh, you know, realistic woodwork. Uh, you don't have to have the, you know, the fancy dancy. Although it does make it easier to have the fancy dancy tool. Right? It's a shortcut. Shortcuts are good, but not don't become so overly reliant on shortcuts that you can't do it yourself, you know? It's like, I equate that to the, and other, some people might, I don't know, some people might be offended by this, but when I was a kid, <clears throat> I learned to count back change. It was what you did, right? You know, when somebody gave you a, a Five and the and the bill was four dollars and seventy nine cents. You gave them four pennies, seventy nine or no, you gave them a penny, eighty, right? And then you gave them two dimes, so their change was twenty one cents. So eighty, ninety, five dollars. And but now the kids have to wait for the machine to tell them how much change to give. <laughs> and if the machine is down. They can't give change, or those that can aren't allowed to. And I don't understand why. <laughs> I don't understand why when power is down, the store closes. 
Did everybody just forget how to count? I mean, you know, I can get it for credit cards and stuff like that because you need electronics for that. But if you've got cash or if you've got a kid standing at the register who suddenly cannot do math, simple math, like add, subtract, or count change, that just drives me crazy. Okay, so there is a tip and a trick for just about everything. Now, these, I will tell you that there is no part of this one that I've done so far that I have not used Cohen ors on. Um, I don't know. And the challenge on this one was, was I going to be able to use them for everything? The one thing about it also that I do want to say is when you are coloring something along the lines of brickwork, uh, it is important to uh, pay attention to the grain of what you are working on. Uh, because if you are, the eye picks up subtle problems. Uh, the, 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 the eye doesn't pick it up. The brain picks it up on some sort of subliminal level. And it, it's why when you play those um, find it games, you know, find the find the item or find the you know hidden object or whatever. The reason why you can find it is because your brain is you know going 99 billion connections a second. It's looking for color, shape, anything out of the ordinary, stuff that doesn't flow. And if you are you know if you are have a grain that's supposed to be going like this this way and you suddenly have a section of it going this way then your brain is going to pick that up and it's going to draw your attention to it even without your consciously being aware of it so you want to um make sure that if you're you're looking at a grain something that has a grain that you are paying attention to coloring with the grain. And aren't I just a font of wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> I just pay attention, that's all. Uh, all right, so I just I just want to color right up to this thing all right so now uh i like i said the, the challenge on this one was would i be able to color everything uh using the tritones and so it, it, the answer ultimately is i think so yes but let's you know sort of test that theory out um I love the way that this one turned out. So this one is the blues and then the, I believe that I used the pinks, might have been the purples. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, there are just all sorts of really cool, like this one is um, sort of this purpley wine, pink, and and a, um, well, you can see what color it is. It's like wine and pink and uh, eggshell. And this one is the blues and the three blues, right? So what I want to try and do is something sort of similar to what I did here, only I want to do it on this one, right? And so I do want, see, it comes with all these, like here is a, you know, a green, there's three greens. All right, and so they are forest, rainforest, and meadow. So, the next question is, whoops, hang on. 
Uh, ah, there it is. Did you swatch these, Christine? Well, of course. Of course I did. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just have to find it because it's been a while. Been a while since I... Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Back up. Just a tad. All right, so we've got all of the... And so you can really tell... Uh, I, all I did is just, you know, just straight across um, colored on these uh, just to, you know, see what it was that they were like. Um, so I think that what I want is that one is sort of out there in the brightness, but I'm still going to go with rainforest for my um, for my greenery the darkest because there's going to be shadows and things like that in that stem. So uh, we want to go ahead and do that. Just to I just want to lay in a little bit of that so I know right where it is. And it's already in there. Of course, a little bit sharper of a point would be a good deal. But... And the other thing is, is that at least with these, you also don't <coughs> have to worry if you are a pencil masher. Because, uh -oh. now I will say that if there is fault, with these pencils because there's fault with any kind of tool right you have to learn to use them it is that they break so easy and um they are really fragile everybody uh so it is unfortunate but it is Really true. And so you just have to learn to work with it. So maybe pencil mashing is not necessarily the best plan. I'm also not... I'm concentrating on making it perfect because... There's still layers left to do. So just you're just adding really you're just your hints of color in there. There we go. <coughs> Much better. So just hints of color. Now I've got the lighter and I will go ahead and use it to sort of blend out the other, right? And get the ones that I missed. Now this is such a much lighter color that what it does is add just that little bit once again, a variegation. Variga variegation. <laughs> variegation. Is variegation anything like verification? Sorry. My, 
my little brain is on a holiday somewhere. <laughs> I, I, I keep inviting it to come home, but it's like going away. So look, the lighter and the darker um, will then sort of allow for the idea that there's dappled sunlight in there. It won't show up that way quite yet. Uh, but if it gets darker around it, it will. Okay. That's just an idea there. All right, now let's grab the blue. Oh, I want the lighter blue. So I want a light blue here. At the top. So that it will look a lot like there's light. Oops, I'm, I apologize for that. I need to flip, do my, my flipping of that out here. I do want to thank Sandy over at um, uh, what is Sandy? What's the name of Sandy's channel? Um, but she sent me these colors. See, my brain isn't completely gone. I know who sent me stuff. And she's got a very clever name for her channel, and I don't remember what it is. Each pencil has three colors, so technically you'd think you'd be able to. Well, hello, Corolla. You are never late, my dear. You are never late. Party doesn't get started until you arrive. And so, you know, once again, I am, if I can't switch pencils, right, you know, I'm not happy, right? So I got to be able to switch my pencils out. And... Everything needs more than one color. Uh, let's see here. Now I need a little bit of... Uh, let's go on here. Get that little area in there. So. <coughs> so Dog, wait. Uh, creative coloring. Thank you, Kenny. Yes. I think that is exactly what it is. Uh, can, thank you, Kenny. You saved my bacon. <laughs> Back to your flower page. Ooh, are you coloring flowers? Um, is it in that new book? The, uh, the new, um, uh, oh, yeah. 
I want like in a in a terio, and a uh, I saw it on Anne's channel. Um, she did a flip through of it. Um, flowerscape is that what it's called? Flower. Anyway, I I put it down. It, it's it's I, it's definitely on my list. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I put it on my wish list the minute I saw it. It's like oh, holy cow. Because you all know I'm about the flowers, right? I love the flowers. Never met a flower I didn't love. Well, except that stinky, um, that stinky corpse flower thing. I don't like that one. <laughs> Definitely not. And, of course, I am totally coloring all of this. If you guys want to see a really talented color, colorist who uses colors so subtly and if you are watching me and have been living under a rock somewhere and don't know about Karen at um, at Zucchini Kitty uh, as in all one word then you need to go over to Zucchini Kitty and check out her channel because she is so incredibly talented with color oh it's not what she's colored. It's what she hasn't colored. <laughs> it's like you, you look at it and you just go, what? Your brain just doesn't process what she's, what she's managed to do there. It's incredible. I'm going to, if you don't enjoy a little drill noise. Uh oh. Oh. I don't know why I have never figured out that, that just does not work on pencil like that. Uh, it's great for pencil pencil, but not good for colored pencil. And, of course, what I really should do is this. Because if I want to make little highlights, sun dapples, this is one of the better ways to do it. Is to use your little... Um, your little, you know, electric eraser, and you can erase out your sun dapples and do all of those types of things. Yes, yeah, she really is. She really is amazing. And, um, ah, okay, Kenny. Well, yeah, I, I'm not surprised. You're coloring Rita Berman. Okay. And there's Anne. <laughs> Speaking of Anne, where your ears burning, my dear, we were just talking about you and that marvelous flower book that you uh, that you uh, did the um, uh, blah, 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 did the flip through on. I commented on it. I think Kenny ordered it. <laughs> um, I put it on my list. So she shall be pretty happy with you, the uh, the the artist. Okay. So anyway, you get the idea of how these Kohenors work, right? Uh, for uh, working on a project like this. So again, you know, this this is the story of our books, and you know, when I go to tell the story of this particular book. <coughs> I'll talk about this being the page that I've really taught myself, um, you know, about the Kohenors, how they work, uh, you know, working on 
little bits of, uh, uh, like for instance, these fade. I can tell you that these absolutely fade. And um, Christine, I have a little Tombow. I have the little Tombow erasers. Will that work? Oh no, it doesn't have to be electric. Could be a it could be a pencil on that. Could be a, an eraser on the end of your of your number two pencil. It it um, <laughs> and it only hurts when you try to walk. Ay ay ay! You guys, if you don't know, Anne stepped on a horrible, horrible, horrible nail. And it went through her foot, and so <coughs> she did her best to lame herself. And I hope that you are soaking that foot right now. As you can hear, I am, as usual, busy trying to cough to death. Uh, so the reason why I know that these uh, fade is because see how shiny and new this looks, this section that I just put in? I haven't done anything to any of this to make that different. Um, it does. <coughs> Excuse me. If I go quiet like that, guys, that's because I'm fighting off coughing. Uh, there, it does come with a blender. I've never really found it necessary. But. <coughs> Hang on. Okay. Nope. <coughs> Too soon. Hang on. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. Huh. Did I mention it was a little warmer today? <clears throat> that brings the molds out. The leaf molds and the 
background, and then I was thinking about Anne's foot. <coughs> I still, I mean, I just, exactly, it, that just gives me the creeps, of, you know, the idea, because it's so easy. All right. Oh, sorry. I've had to actually take my jacket off. I just got over warm. All right. The, um, well, yeah, the fact that I smoke is just not, you know, not helpful at all. Uh, yeah. And, you know, so, yeah, between the mold... And, and the fact that I smoke, I'm an idiot, is really what it is. <laughs> so I'm going to just you really just and I got to thinking about Ann's foot <laughs> and how easy it can happen, you know. Of course, I get worried. I haven't gone barefoot, not even in my own house, in 30 years. Uh, not since I lived in a house that had carpet. Um, and um, even then, I don't usually. Uh, go barefoot. I, 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 for some reason, I just don't have to. And yet I know Anne does, but she was wearing shoes and it still happened. And having stepped out of my shoe the other day, uh, when well, I say the other day, it was now, it was several years ago now. I was actually at uh, the zoo uh, with my nephew and, uh, walking down the hill and my uh, heel caught on something. I stepped right out of my shoe and down I went. So, and I hit my head on the, well, almost hit my head on the pavement. Um, I hit, I hit so hard and uh, almost, <laughs> with my nephew standing around, you know, going, wow, Aunt Christine. In the meantime, perfect strangers came and helped me up. He's like, I don't want to know her. I've never been back. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I have, I've never been back here. <clears throat> Go put a shot of something in your coffee. Um, something in your hot coffee. Why? I don't need a shot of anything. I can think of nothing I would like better or nothing I would like worse. Well, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe some Kahlua. Yeah, I could do some Kahlua. Mm. I could do a nice raspberry liqueur or how about um, some Grand Marnier? Ooh, yeah, I could do some Grand Marnier. I could do some Grand Marnier in... No, that would be a waste of good. Well, no, that's not true. 
You could do some brandy in uh in in some eggnog. Doesn't matter what kind of year, what time of year it is, there's always room for brandy and eggnog. <laughs> yes, a hot toddy. I love that. Ooh, a hot buttered rum. Oh my. Oh, oh Lord, those are good. Hmm. All right, so I'm just, I keep saying yes. All right, so you see how this is done. Uh, it's just like, it gets tedious, and so you want to go do something else, right? Um, at least I do. I, I have a tendency to lose uh, patience with these things. All right, but then you can do, like, Grace. Now, I watched Anne do this um she did a uh the fireplace the, uh she did one of those uh, pictures uh i think it was a jade summer but um it had a little girl falling backward over a cushion of some kind in front of this big rock fireplace with a big roaring fire and um and so she did the rock wall in Koenors, and I remember seeing them there too. Now, it was right after uh, Nisi, or yeah, I'd seen them on the Dollar Diva. So I think her name is Nisi, isn't it? Um, okay, so this is. So I want to do this. Uh, now, this, I believe. Now, I am really just using the weight of the pencil here. Just to create a little bit of... Um, see what I mean? It just, it's like, it is just like magic. All right, so now you've done that. That's really light, light, light. Um... This is what I want to see. So I did it really light, right? Now I'm going to take... the blender to it. It's contesting how the tool works. Not, I mean, it doesn't only work one way. It's going to work different ways in different hands. So now, look at that. I mean, you know, that's entirely different. And then you can also add, I mean, you're going to be able to add different Um, what am I going to say? I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the words. Um, different effects with different colored pencils. As I'm, I, I, and I'm sort of going over those ideas in my head. There's, you know, you, if you wanted to put. Uh, gold bars or gold, you know, detailing on this. If you wanted to make it painted instead of gray concrete, if you, you know, maybe you painted it red. Um, if you, you know, if that is concrete, what is this made out of? Is it also a concrete type post or is it more made out of... Um, uh, 
like a, a yellow alabaster type thing. Uh, you know, keeping in mind that it's sort of an eclectic, overgrown, uh, you know, country squire's courtyard type thing. Um, and, you know, or are you sort of overcomplicating it in that way? And, uh, so I just, I do love that it sort of blends together like that. Fascinating. Okay. So I'll do that. Then, then I can take more of a black. Um, probably from the, oops, uh, grab the deli set. Because you can then you can then enhance over it. You know what I mean? Uh, pull that out. So then let's pull the black. Okay. That's what I want to try and do here. Just around the little edges. Of the foliage. just to try and add a little bit of dimension. Then, since this seems to be the natural lighting spot right here, I'll go ahead and darken up this edge over here. Okay, which then gives a little bit more light looking to this. So if we then pull just a little bit of this lighter gray in. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see how it blended with other colors like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oops. So just really lightly right there on the outer edge. So sort it of moves the light a little closer in. Now, we want to make this look really three-dimensional, so let's darken up this shadow right down here. And... Lightens up that. Darken up this. Okay. 
just really lightly. Well, let's see here. It's just a little darker over here. Okay. Sorry, as I fall off into the zone. Uh, let's see here. This just a little bit more down there. Yes, okay. All right, so that's a little bit better. Well, hi, Kathy. How are you? And hello to anybody and everybody that I might have missed. Uh, coming in, I'm sure that there are a number of you, given how many the counter shows are here um, and how many are speaking. So, um, welcome, welcome. Okay. Right, so now, if we pull a little more, okay, keeping it on that line. Black is such a, a strong color. You want to be very careful with it. Um, on the other hand, uh, it really is for deepening shadows. It really can't be beaten. But you do have to Just want to be mindful of it, that's all. Okay. So once again, shout out there. Uh, okay, now this obviously is going to, let's see. Assuming if the light is coming this way, this is going to cast the shadow backwards. Right? So whatever that is. Just assume that there's a shadow down there of the actual base itself. Okay. Now, here's an interesting thing. And one of these days we'll do this as an exercise. Uh, let's assume that we wanted to make it really late afternoon, right? And maybe the, the, uh, the sun hitting it from, uh, you know, an angle like right around there. Uh, we might cast a shadow all the way to this back wall. So we could definitely do that. I think that's, a, I always find, um, I always find it interesting when colorists uh, think in, you know, terms like that. The only one I know who does it really consistently is, um, uh, uh, color my world, Lori. Um, and but I, I, because she, I know that there are there are lots of others, and so I just need to figure out who they are. But uh, so the tritones do be prepared for the fact that they will fade. All right, they'll fade out. Uh, they'll fade basically from this to this, which I think is actually pretty good because. You kind of want it to, you know, you, after a little bit, you want it to fade. Um, all right, so now we've done that. Now, let's say that we wanted... <laughs> you cannot have two sets of pencils out, Christine. You just can't. Um, and, and I'll have to pull this back out because... I'm not done with this yet. Uh, 
but it uh, but I need to work on this so I know how to finish up this. All right, and so that's the problem. Well, maybe not. It's a problem, but I'll put that type in there. Put that there, and I'll do this. Okay, now we want. I want these light, light lights. Ooh, look at that. Okay. What I need is my swatch book. So I want to make alabaster. The first thing I want is marigold. So I want the marigold. I'm thinking the marigold. And the tiger. No, the marigold and the earth tones. Okay. So we're going to go with marigold and the earth tones. So this one, that's ember. Um, whoops. There we go. That's this one. And they have... Um, the names of the pencils are right here. And I will make sure, once again, guys, I'll make sure there's a link for these Covenors um, in the uh, description below. Okay. But like I say, I screwed up and I forgot to put it in there. So if I'm going to make this, if I do... Alabaster. I'm going to come in with orange or yellow. Alabaster is a very, um, it's like beige. To the yellow side. Pulling that light. Just using the weight of the pencil. Not, you know, not really coloring, pressing it hard or anything like that. And, of course, controlling the color in the center just simply by releasing any pressure at all and not coloring this, you know, this center line. Because what will happen is, is that as we color the edge... And then sort of blend the whole thing crosswise. It'll um, add just the right, hopefully. Hopefully it'll add just the right amount of color to that side.
So just trying hard not to not to gild the lily, just to main, you know, maintain weight control on the pencil. Do need is the gray. See now there is a, a gray and a dark black here as well, uh, which of course we were using for that. But now let's pull it or. See, I put the color down first, and then add the shadow, because that way. This gray is going to pick up the undertone. Of that shadow. Yeah. Well, my vision is now shot. Well, I will start working this close. just takes my ability to focus away to you know my eyes actually won't focus I can see this which is an inch away from my face practically <laughs> not an inch but you know what I mean So you just keep working out um wait a second what <laughs> I, i'm totally confused Kenny B. Kathy. Three days now. You haven't. Um. Well, hi, Roxanne. <laughs> How are you? Um. Yes, Anne can tell her own story. Or, if people want to hear the story, they can actually watch Anne's video, which she posted a couple days ago, in which she tells the entire story, along with a rather exciting um, um, unboxing of a... Uh, uh, an unboxing and a wonderful defense of of a friend of ours. I thought that that was just a lovely thing that you did, and a very lovely thing. And I also want to go on the record. I have said in the past that I thought that the whole um, living doll hobby was a uh you know was was creepy uh, i i think i i've called it creepy cool i am now leaning hard into cool um mostly because it, uh, you know i've learned more and when you learn more about something that you there, there's, you know, there is, in fact, 
Here's a perfect lesson, man. I'll tell you what, that is actually a perfect lesson. Uh, you know, when we when we learn about that which we find creepy, suddenly it we don't find it creepy anymore. Um, so, you know, it's like people say, oh, well, I hate such and such kind of people because they're this, that, or the other thing. And then you find out that everything you thought was true is wrong. <laughs> and that the only person being hateful is you. <laughs> The opening of a mind. It's a beautiful thing. Forget that these pencils are not all one. not one color they are you know all right so now then you take the And when you get to the lighter, you know, if you're working on this and you're using the, the Kohenors and you've got a place where you want it to be just a little bit lighter. Um, oh, no, I know, but it was like, you know, what I, that's what I, what I mean, Mona, is, is that when you have a prejudice against something or somebody, generally the best way to get uh, you know, to 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 um, you know to address it is to find out that um, or, you know to get to know that person. So um, and then you discover that whatever it is that you thought about, you know, those kind of people, those kind of people, kind um, is wrong, <laughs> and that that uh, you know that there was really nothing to be afraid of. Um, and that's how I was raised, actually. I was raised to, like, not see things like color and, you know, stuff like that. And I have a tendency to give everybody the benefit of the doubt until they abandon that, you know, until they prove themselves to be a jerk, and then, then there is no save in their butt with me. <laughs> Oh wow, can you hear that? <laughs> it's like my stomach is going. Hey, hey, yo, I'm here. I haven't eaten today. You gonna get around to feeding me, Mom? <laughs> you only haven't eaten because I haven't taken the time to prepare anything, not because there isn't any food in the house. Okay, so there's my, uh, it, it'll require a little bit more tweaking and things like that, but this is my alabaster um, uh, uh, yeah, and I, and, and I haven't talked to her since, but yes, but I, I, I took exception to um, my dear friend Shara and her new hobby and i did it live on you know i i just basically said that i thought it was creepy 
and um, and I was wrong. I was wrong. I freely admit I was wrong. And Cheryl's got a really cool channel, uh, and uh, and so you know you should like check her out. It's called Reborn Living Dolls, and it's doing great. And I think that she's terrific. And um, yeah. And who knows, if I can ever afford one, one might land here too. I like I am I'm on the record as saying I have never ever I mean, other than one time, I've never held even held a baby. But I held my uh, my dear friend Ivy's little girl. Her name was Nikki. But that was uh, Nikki now has. Five daughters of her own. <laughs> so, you know how many years ago that was? It was a long time ago. Oh my gosh, my friend Ivy and her husband are grandparents. Five, six, they have six grand, six grandchildren now. Seven, seven on the way. The seventh is on the way. Because one of the five isn't born yet. One of the five daughters is still cooking. Just amazing. Yeah, that, and you know, that's, like I said, it, I just think it is, I mean, I, I guess I, I think it's cool now. Um <laughs> Not just because Anne, you know, Anne decided to get one, um, and and I've seen it. Uh, I don't, you know, what it was. I and I'll I'll be really honest with you. It's that it's that Cher got so many at one time that sort of, you know, freaked me out a little bit. But that I think is. You know that was a getting started on the you know this whole kind of hobby and which she has embraced and it is working really good for her and um, and I'm like I say I'm more than delighted I am more than delighted Not only that, but, you know, who the heck am I to judge anyway? <laughs> it's like, I haven't, I haven't earned the right to judge anybody, for heaven's sakes. None of us has. All right. So, as you can see, I've really gotten, what, I've spent a couple of hours here. Uh, at least an hour and 20 minutes of it doing this and I that's how much we've done it's just amazing and I don't remember not you know I don't think I sat here and didn't color for great swaths of time did I <laughs> uh, oh it's it's beautiful it's yeah, I would I would absolutely have to get one with closed eyes though. Absolutely, because there's there there'd be no chance that I could I no. <laughs> I couldn't do it like couldn't do an open eyed one. Babies creep me out to begin with. Like maybe that's why I thought it was creepy. People would go, Oh my god, Christine is creeped out by babies. No, they scare the bejesus out of me. <laughs> I'm not creeped out by them. They terrify me. <laughs> uh, absolutely terrify me. All right, so... We're going to back that up. We're going to, uh, let's see, bring up the camera controls. And back that up. Uh, 
yeah, that's going to need a little bit of work, but still, um, hopefully, you've gotten. And now, I, you know, I did the the roof, um, the wagon, all of that. I did with the Kohenors, and you can see they are just so cool. So definitely, and I'll put, like I say, I will put the link to the tritones, Kohenor tritones. Um, in the, this video, along with a link for uh, these two books as well. Uh, and hopefully uh, you will give them a try uh, for your next project or uh, at least use the idea of the three colors mixed together, uh, you know, to sort of create uh, small, even in small spaces, every single thing is the Kohenors here. You know, it's just how did it, it uh, how did it pan out? You know, you can see. Gives you wonderfully random, and that in it, that, that in itself teaches you something. All right, so everybody, thank you all for being here today and joining me until we meet again next week. Same bat channel, same bat time. <laughs> um, color something pretty. Okay. Bye, everybody.